You're listening to Music Tectonics. Welcome back to Music Tectonics. When I was little, I was the type of kid that banged on something to see what kind of noise it would make. Before I got into the music industry, I would pore over liner notes to find out about what was making the sounds I heard. I learned about an West African balafon, a xylophone, that not only used dry gourds as resonators, but included the membrane of a spider egg to make a cool buzzing sound on certain notes. I collected jaw harps from all over the world, one of which is from Vietnam, and I think they sound the best. They're said to be made from leftover bullet shells from the Vietnam War. Here's a great thumb piano I made out of a suitcase and some hacksaw bl blades as, as tines. So you can see why I listen to music for timbre and rhythm more than for lyrics. But that also means I'm looking for less traditional sounds and less traditional places to find those sounds. I'm your Music Tectonics host, Dimitri Vitsa. I'm also the founder and CEO of Rock, Paper, Scissors, the music innovation and music tech PR and marketing firm. And last year when I was at NAMM, the, the huge musical instrument uh, conference trade fair that you heard us talk about on the last episode, I stumbled onto a postcard for a synth showcase of the SoCal Synth Society, and I had to go. It was my favorite part of NAMM 2023, and I went back to their electric sonic madness again this year, where I got to see one of my favorite YouTubers, True Cuckoo, rocking out on the new Teenage Engineering KO2 and tons of other creative synth performances, some of whose instruments you're going to hear demoed on today's episode. If you love new instruments and effects, be sure to check out last week's episode recorded on the floor at the NAMM show. I recorded today's demos at a new event showcasing synthesizers of all kinds in downtown LA. It was organized by Bukla, a synth company that's been around since the 1960s. While it coincided with the NAMM trade show in Anaheim, California, and I saw some of the same people at both, this event, it had a very different vibe. It felt more like a craft fair combined with a makerspace than a trade show, with handmade wooden brass and 3D printed tools sharing space with sleek electronics, candy colored buttons, and Euro rack patch cables, all in an old warehouse with a vaulted wooden ceiling, a very warm industrial vibe. Make sure you see some of the photos of the synths in this episode on the blog post that goes with it at musictectonics.com slash podcast. All right. In a moment, we'll hear from Peter Nybor from Bukla on why he got this event going. What I encountered was an enthusiastic community who love crafting sounds and pushing boundaries with interfaces and what music feels and sounds like. Enough from me. Let's hear from the warm, super creative people who were at the event to share their new instruments and tools. You'll hear demos from Soma Laboratory, Noise Engineering, Electron, and 1010 Music. First up, Peter Nybor of Bukla. How you doing, Peter? I'm doing great. So what is this? What are we here? What are we doing here? So Bukla and Friends is a synth community, a synth expo, a mini, should I say, minimum viable trade show. <laughs> we love it. This started as a minimum viable, po yes. viable podcast, so we know what you're talking about. There you go. All right. It's all about minimally, minimal and viable. Awesome. So for folks who don't know Bukla, what's the quick uh, soundbite there? Uh, Bukla is really one of like the original synthesizer manufacturers and innovators. Don Bukla started making synthesizers in the late 60s, uh, really coming at it from the position of like trying to make something for the avant-garde rather than something that makes it like for people doing traditional music so that they could understand electronic music. He's like, no, wait, there's all these weird ideas. I want to make an instrument for that. And so he got started making modules, and he really made one of the first like portable electronic music instruments in the music easel, and that came out around 1973, 1974. A lot of his instruments were bespoke, kind of like each one was a little bit different. And then Don just kept you know, going with these unusual different ideas about synthesis. He was really into additive synthesis rather than subtractive. Um, everything's a little bit left field when it comes to the Buchla designs. Um, and, you know, 50 years later, Buchla Company still exists. He passed away in 2015, um, but the company still exists and is still making the products that he designed. Uh, this year, we're just starting to ship the newest iteration of the Music Easel, which uh, is really kind of like a modernized version of it, but it still has the same workflow that the original had, plus a lot of nice additions that help work in the modern studio and towards the modern music mind. So. 
Nice, awesome. So uh, when you think about the the synth world and this emerging like generations of music creators, we're seeing a lot of new types of music being created, created in different ways, not following the traditional models and so forth. Where do you think the synth world fits into that? And what are some trends that you see emerging for this music creation uh, explosion that's happening? Yeah, I don't know. One of the It's hard to say with synth trends are really difficult because the trend has been over really the past really 20 years is a lot of these individual manufacturers that have really been empowered by the ability to have a small team make really powerful technology. And so this is partly um, a result of manufacturing, partly a result of you know the sort of frameworks that exist to, to deal with these chips and make these things, the education that's out there. Um, the trend is really kind of like, in a way it's a fragmented, but here at Buchla and Friends we're trying to create a community around it, right? So we have a lot of different types of synthesizers, different types of approaches to music, but you know we're all under this one kind of weird Quonset hut roof in downtown Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah, awesome, great. Well, we're gonna go dig in. Thanks so much for uh, uh, taking some time with us and congrats, it looks like a great event. Let's hop over to Peter's demo of Buchla's Music Easel. Hey, this is Peter from Buchla. You already met me once, uh, but now I'm gonna give you an opportunity to take a listen to what the Music Easel is about. Um, here's what's really different about it. So right now, you're just hearing a sine tone. And most synthesizers these days, what they do is they take kind of a simple waveform, um, like this, and then take elements away from that. But uh, one of the core things about the Music Easel and a lot of um, Don Buchla's oscillators is they build up sound rather than carving sound out. So I can start with the sine tone. and blend it with some other waveforms. But then there's also this really great concept of distorting that sine wave. Well, it's called wave folding. So now I'm building up the sound from that really simple sound. Um, and I can take some things out of it if I want. Now that's just messing around with sliders. And then I have some other opportunities to make that sound even more complex. And that is kind of the core of how you build a sound with frequency modulation, amplitude modulation, and wave shaping and wave distortion. Instead of just trying to take a sound and then carve what you don't like out of it. Um, another thing that uh, Don Buchla was really interested in was taking cues from analog instruments and applying them to electronic instruments. So one of those things is you know involving the the body. So instead of having uh, a piano keyboard that you know had keys that moved up and down, he incorporated touch technology. And uh, that gave the opportunity to uh, sort of have pressure involved. So now we can start to modulate that sound with my body. And that's just applying a gentle pressure to the key. Um, instead, you know, kind of like instead of the way you use a phone where you're tapping buttons, this actually incorporates pressure. So the expressivity of the body can be part of your music. Um, this was kind of a radical idea at the time. Um, and instead of, you know, thinking about this as a bunch of separate modules that can be combined to make music, the music easel kind of combined the, the core stuff of music, um, expression, time, timbre, and kind of gave them all to you in this sort of cybernetic space age interface of knobs and sliders and metal panels. Um, so it's kind of approachable, but also kind of scary. And it's that tension that makes it really wonderful. Um, and it's kind of a, you know, like I said, cybernetic idea where you have this, uh, that was a discipline that really only came about in maybe the fifties and sixties in that space age period. And Don was one of the first to really kind of apply those, that thinking to uh, electronic music instruments. So it kind of merges the man and the machine and where you give up some of your own control, you also try to impose some of your own control. 
So let's try some other things that are kind of fun. So in that kind of wacky little tune there, there's several things happening that are part me and part technology. And that's kind of the core of what electronic music is about in that, like I said, that cybernetic relationship where you give up some control to the machine, but you also take some control back for your own self. So that's kind of an overview of the ethics and the technology and the ideas of the Buchla Music Easel. Now let's hear something that looks and feels like nothing I've ever seen. Soma Labs is a small company that creates what they call organismic synths with truly or original form factors and creative tactile interfaces. My eye was caught by the Terra, a slab cut from a tree trunk scattered with metal buttons. Hi, this is Bartok. We're at Buchla and Friends. Awesome. Bartok, what is this that we're looking at? We're at the Soma, uh, the Soma booth. What is this instrument? Yeah, this is the Soma Terra. Uh, it's one of their newer uh, synthesizer instruments. Uh, it's like an organismic synthesizer that reacts to how you touch it. Yeah, it's, it's, it looks like it's got a wooden frame to it. It's got silver and golden buttons kind of spread in a, almost looks like your hands, kind of the pattern of your hands, and then an arc of some crazy looking knobs with some, um, like, uh, glyphs or something on it. Yeah, so uh, actually, you, you know, you hit it right on the head. Uh, the way that it's laid out is very intuitive for your hand position. Um, and then the glyphs just respond, uh, correlate to different effects. Well, should we hear what it sounds like? You want to just give us some sound and, and play around with it a little bit? Yeah, ab absolutely. So. And you can hear that if I gently touch it, the sound slowly comes in. Or I can tap it. Wow, that's super cool. So, uh, who who's using the the Soma Terra? What 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 kind of artist is using this? Is this is this a tr traditional synth artist that's using it, or is this a brand new thing that uh, appeals to people who've never even played synths before? Yeah, it could be for you know for, for both of those for anybody. You know, it's it's a brand new synth. We've had a lot of people that stop by that have never played with a synth before, and they love the immediacy of it. We have a lot of people that are, you know, traditional synth players that like how it reacts to your touch. Um, so it's, you know, I, I say uh, any variety of synth enthusiasts. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what I like about it is those buttons. I mean, they almost look like metal buttons on an old, like, military jacket or something. They have a, they have a look like no other instrument, right? And, and as you showed us, you're just barely gently touching them, or you can slide your fingers across like that, yeah, and you get different effects. And, yeah, just, he's just swiping his hands across all of them, and almost like strings, except they look more like little crystal balls or something like that. Exactly, yeah. So, to me, Soma is, is a company that makes uh, you know, organismic synthesizers, meaning they invite you to touch them, invite you to interact with them. Um, it's very hands-on. Um, and if you look at you know, all their instruments, that's um, kind of the feeling, just inviting you to, to play an instrument and not necessarily play a preset. Yeah, great. Bartok, thank you so much for taking the time. Super fun. Oh, thank you. I kind of want one. I'll be back after the break with demos from Noise Engineering, Electron, and 1010 Music. Meet your music tech people. 
Our next free online event is an open mic, open to everyone who's interested in the future of music and innovation. Introduce yourself and share where you're going this conference season so you can start building your posse and your meeting schedule too. Join us March 6th at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. UK time. You'll find out who's going to be at South by Southwest and get started making connections before you hit the busy streets of Austin. Find out where the hot spots for music tech are going to be this year. South by can be hard to navigate, so we'll help you build your game plan. Register for free and learn about our monthly seismic activity online event series at musictectonics.com. See you there. Now back to the show. Okay, let's jump right into a demo from Noise Engineering, a small Eurorack synth maker based in LA. They're known for small, compact modules packed with features with elaborate Latin names and expansive capabilities for sculpting sound. Listen. Hi, this is Marcus Cancilla. I'm here at the uh, Noise Engineering booth at Buchla and Friends. Uh, and today we're looking at one of our modular synth setups. Uh, we're going to be exploring a new synth voice called Inca Ceteritas Alia. It's being sequenced by a prototype uh, quantized random voltage source and going through a reverb. So this is a pretty uh, simple tone. So just to start, we're gonna mess with the timbre a bit. So I can add in some distortion, change the wave shape, change my envelope time. And this is all going through Desmodus Versio, which is one of our uh, reverb processors. I'm gonna bring up that reverb time a bit change some of the flavors of the reverb to kind of see what I want to do. And then I'm going to change our sequence. This is a pretty simple modular system. We're just using about four modules right now. And it's really fun to be able to kind of explore what these things can do. Uh, this sequencing style is very generative. You never really know what you're going to get out of it. And so with just a few patch cables, just a few connections, and a couple of modules, we can create something that we've never heard before and it'll probably never sound quite the same again, which is part of the fun of modular. Can I ask you a question about yeah, this? Yeah. What? <laughs> So if you make something that you love here yeah. and you want to make it again, what happens? Well, it depends. Uh, all of our modules, for the most part, are digital. So they're relatively easy to dial back into a way they sounded before. You just have to remember what the settings are. There's no <laughs> presets here. There's nothing like that. And you have to remember all your connections. So there's definitely people that do that sort of thing. There's folks that perform live with these sorts of systems. But you know, the spirit of experimentation is definitely alive in your Iraq. Yeah, I mean, these, these uh, Eurorack modular systems are all like that. It's not like this is specific to noise engineering's devices or anything, but I'm just curious, since you're here, you've been really quickly set this up for us, plugged in all these wires and pulled all these knobs together, um, and so it sounds like every time you play it, it's pretty much going to be different. Yeah, that's definitely the case, and that's part of why a lot of folks find it so inspiring. Um, it's a great way to just kind of, you know, it's an inspiration generator. You patch something together you like, and it'll just it'll do its own thing or you can kind of rein that in and make it do what you want. Amazing. This has been super fun. Thanks, Marcus. I appreciate you doing this. Thanks so much for coming by. Next, let's go over to Electron, a big name brand that makes synthesizers, drum machines, and groove boxes used by everyone from Tom York to Dell the Funky Homo Sapien. Let's hear what's new from Electron. Hey, how's it going? I'm Mario from Electron, and we're here showing the Analog Rhythm 1.70 OS update. So before we jump into the updates, for people who aren't familiar with this one, how do you describe it? So Analog Rhythm Mark II is a drum machine. Uh, it's an analog drum machine with analog circuits, so you could design your own sounds. And there's a bunch of a few different um, types of synthesis, so it's not just your basic like bass drum, kick drum. There's also some melodics as well, but it also has sampling that you layer on top per track. It's eight voices and 12 tracks, and it has individual outs, um, which allows you, if you want, to break out all your um, audio into separate tracks. It's really great for the studio. It's very powerful for sound design. And it also has a lot of really great performance capabilities. Uh, so analog, uh, drum machine with sampling, and a lot of performance aspects as well, too. You know what? I want to hear it. What, what, what should we start with here? Let's do it. So we got this beat going on. 
Uh, I resampled it. Let's just listen to that first. So these are all of the new kind of uh, machines playing all at once. And I resampled it, so it's really cool. Uh, that's one thing that I really love about the analog rhythm is you could make synth sounds and create your own sound, but then resample it. And when you go from synth uh, from synthesis to sampling, there's just a whole new world that you can start changing. So if I bring in the drums. So now we're back to the normal synthesis. And if I go here, I could start changing. Nice. Excellent. Thanks so much, Mario. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Let's wrap up this episode with a demo from 1010 Music. After working on the team behind Native Instruments, Tractor DJ, the folks at 1010 Music make sleek modular synths. I was drawn to a collection of colorful little boxes on their table. So let's get a demo of their Nano Box collection. Hi, I'm Christine from 1010 Music, and today we're going to demo the, uh, some of our products here. So we have our Nanobox products, which are a small, compact synthesizer sound sources that are designed to either work on their own or with an external MIDI controller. We also have our Blue Box mixer, and we have our Black Box, which is a, a groove box. I have to say, these are adorable. They're really beautiful colors, very small. Looks like you could just pick them up and put them in a bag. They're about the size of a deck of cards, for those of you who can't see them right now. So just to give you a bit of a sense of the scale, and they have four buttons and two knobs on each one. So each of the different colors is a different um, way of generating s sound. So the red one is our fireball, which is a wavetable synthesizer. Yellow is our lemon drop, which is a granular synthesizer. The violet color is a FM synthesizer called Razzmatazz. It's an FM drum machine. And the orange one is called Tangerine, and that is a sampler. All right, let's, let's hear some stuff. What can we do with it? All right, so we've got a controller here. We're going to trigger some sounds with a fireball first. Let's see what that sounds like. Next, I can show you the lemon drop, which is a granular synthesizer. And... This can sound ethereal or it can sound gritty depending on what kind of sounds you, which sounds that you're using with it. One more here, so we've got the Rasmataz, which is a drum machine. Awesome. So who is the Nanobox series targeted towards? It's targeted towards synth players. People, so part of the ethos behind it is you probably already have a MIDI controller, but you want to get new sounds out of it. And so depending on which sound you want to play with, if you're an introductory user, you can just have new sounds added to it. If you're more of a sound designer, you, they're very customizable. You can customize the sound that's coming out of them. So you can get deeper into it and play with the synthesis and learn a little more about granular or wavetable synthesis and how that works. Perfect. Last question. What is 1010 Music? What are you guys known for? I know we over, went over one product, but I know you have other stuff. So we started off with our Bitbox, which is a modular product. And basically, we have digital synthesizer products that are sound generating products that are primarily touchscreen focused. Christine, thanks so much. This is fun. Thank you. Have a good day. Thanks for joining me visiting some of the booths at Buchla and Friends. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. And remember, my last episode from the NAM show, delving into innovations in what making music can look and sound like, was issued last week. So check out that podcast, too. Interviews and our new How to Startup series from music tech founders and their friends will be back soon. Hope you enjoyed checking out all these crazy musical instrument innovators.
Thanks for listening to Music Tectonics. If you like what you hear, please subscribe on your favorite podcast app. We have new episodes for you every week. Did you know we do free monthly online events that you, our lovely podcast listeners, can join? Find out more at musictectonics.com. And while you're there, look for the latest about our annual conference and sign up for our newsletter to get updates. Everything we do explores the seismic shifts that shake up music and technology, the way the Earth's tectonic plates cause quakes and make mountains. Connect with Music Tectonics on Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. That's my favorite platform. Connect with me, Dimitri Vitsa, if you can spell it. We'll be back again next week, if not sooner. You're listening to Music Tectonics.